Welcome back to ABT Lockdown Live. This is your source of information about all things tournament, past, maybe not present, and future uh, for ABT AFC. And just trying to keep all our guys together that like tournament fishing and want to talk about it because uh, we can't do it at the moment. Uh, this section we've got is called Remember That Time. And remember that time is where I get an old AFC, ABT, record holder, grand final winner, participant, and talk about their favourite time that they've had in uh, in the ABT and AFC community. And uh, tonight, we've got Tim Morgan here. Now, this is very nepotistic, we know, but this segment, it's taken us a, f- a little while to uh, to develop it, to get the technology working, and Timmy's been good enough to uh, to work with us and all of our screw-ups to get this right. So, uh, Timmy, welcome. Welcome to uh, ABT Lockdown Live. Yeah, well, can't go fishing, so let's talk about it. And I tell you what, if you're anything like me, and you are, because you're my brother, you have got a garage full of fishing gear, a whole lot of memories, and a lot of history in uh, in ABT. Of course, you have been fishing ABT brim and bass events since day one, and probably haven't fished as much in the, the last decade, but in the first decade of AFC, you had some pretty cool memories, didn't you? Yeah, it was it was some great times fishing with some really good mates, and and you know got to see a lot of the country and. And it was really at that time when a lot of the techniques we take for granted today were evolving. So it was great to be a part of that. And and it was always, there was just every year there seemed to be like a new hot technique. So now you might have 10 techniques bass fishing, but back then we might have started with one, two, three, and we've come through the evolution of those. So it's, it's you know, it's it's, I love tournament fishing because it's just evolved fishing so quickly in Australia. Yeah, that's it. When we started, I remember uh, down at Maroon Dam, it was a couple of guys fishing fly, spinner baits, and not even many plastics, really. It was sort of, it was really a, a two trick pony. And as you say, nowadays, guys have a dozen rods on their deck. They can have a different lure on each one, everything from jigs to the top orders, buzz baits, and every single thing in between. Let's not get distracted because we're going to talk techniques a little bit later on. Let's talk about your favourite moment in AFC. Of course, you were an inaugural AFC member. You started out in the AFC Brim Pro Series, and I've actually got that one sitting here. I'm going to show you the AFC Brim Pro Series. There's a, they're pretty hard to get nowadays. That was one that had Starlo, Wrighty, Miller, Jesse Lomas, Adam Reuter, and you in it, of course. You remember that. And yep. uh, you guys all fished for Brim down in the uh, the first episode in the Brisbane River. Um, but you were one of the few anglers that fished uh, across and qualified for two species you fished brim and bass and of course in some of the episodes we fished for barra as well the brim and the bass guys together so i know this is a difficult question for you but you you had to go and pull out and tell us your very favorite afc fishing moment what was it well i think going back on it all it's, it is a long time ago now and uh, and uh thinking about it but probably uh a comp at somerset dam where you know, it was really tough fishing. Uh, I got some good fish. Uh, of course, it's one that I won. I wouldn't pick one that I didn't catch any fish in. But um, <laughs> You didn't pick the one but, you got kicked out of AFC with. Why didn't you pick that? <laughs> well, uh, that was an end bucket brim, but believe that. <laughs> That's a bad memory. But um, I, I suppose just, just sitting there, having a good game plan, sticking to that game plan all day and catching a couple of couple of pretty good fish. And, you know, having a few good things like Harry singing in it as well was uh, <laughs> the icing on the cake. Yeah, it is. It's this one here. It's the AFC. It's uh, it's Series 6, that one. It was when you are in Team Club Marine uh, fishing on Somerset Dam. And, and uh, I've been through and I've picked out the highlights from this episode at the moment. And uh, in that event, you actually set the AFC record for the biggest bag. It was uh, two fish because it was a two fish bag back then for 4.2 kilos. And you went within 10 grams of beating the biggest AFC bass at the time, which was 2.2 kilos at the time. And you dropped that big one on, it was 2.19. But you weren't that disappointed really because you really pants the rest of the field. And in case you don't remember the full results, uh, Moddy and Harry only caught one fish each. And it was between you and Symesy because you both caught a limit and caught upgrades. Now, take us through that day. Um, because we've got some highlights playing in the background here of what's happening. And, and take us through that day. You only caught five fish for the day, but run through that AFC day for us. Well, it, Somerset, 
it, it is. It can be the best dam you can ever fish, and it can be the biggest heartbreaking dam you can ever fish. You can go there one weekend and catch 70 fish. You can go the next weekend and lucky to turn a scale. And it, it was fishing pretty tough. So on the pre-fish day, I covered a lot of kilometres, a lot of sounding, and found one or two fish here and there. But Symesy and I both at different times found the same school of fish in Bay 13, and it, and it was a big school of fish. The fishing was tough, um, but luckily enough, on the I found those fish on the practice day. I think I had two or three casts at it, got one really good fish, marked the spot, and stayed away from it for the rest of the day because I didn't think anyone else really knew about it, but Symesy did. Um, Wait a sec, this was, this was Bay 13. This is the most popular spot in Somerset. You thought no one else knew about it? Well, that, that you know, now, now it is <laughs> back, back then. <laughs> But, you know, it, it is a big dam to cover in a day as well. So, you know, you've got Red Rock, Pelican Point, Wyangy yep. Creek. You've got the flats up at Kirkley. You've got Queen Street. So to really, it would take more than one day to sound all that area properly. So I was lucky enough to find a find a good patch of fish. And, and realistically, I spent the rest probably another six or seven hours sounding around and didn't find another good patch of fish. So my whole game plan was to go to that school of fish in Bay 13 and stay there all day. Well, we saw that on the show, and the first fish that you caught was actually uh, you'd rotated through every lure in your in your rotation, basically, and you got to your last lure, and it was you know back at the time it was a bit ahead of its time. It was a it was a jackal mask soft vibe, uh, but you know talking about how tournament fishing's evolved. There are a thousand brands of soft vibes today, but back then there was probably only one, and it was that jackal mask, wasn't it? Yep, the jackal mask was good, and I really liked fishing that lure because it's the perfect bony brim shape, which is what the fish in those, those big bass dams eat. And and when you got those fish sitting right on the bottom, I, I like using those masks and, and the soft vibes um, when you see the fish on the bottom. And it's just sort of hopping it up. And nine times out of ten, as that lure's dropping back down, you get that, that definite clunk. You can set the hook. And I, I think my biggest fish ever in, in Somerset would have come on, on the mask vibe, and, and it's accounted for a lot of big fish over the years. Yeah, look, Somerset is a great lake. I remember back at that time as well, I took a couple of uh, South Africans there and their first day bass fishing, What the, they got two bass in the first 10 minutes and one was 6.9 pound and one was 7.9 pound. And that was and they go, geez, this Aussie bass fishing's awesome. I go, dude, they're the biggest two bass I've ever seen, so it's not going to get any better. And it didn't because those things got a little bit tough. Look, the other the other thing that you did was uh, you actually put a couple more fish in the boat uh, on that uh, Mask 5, some of them slow rolling, some hopping. But the real a real big technique back then, and it's what you used to put your second kicker in the well, was fly fishing. And, uh, of course, we all learnt bass fly fishing from the great Johnny Schofield, who we will get on this show at some stage in the next six months, I'm sure. Take us through that fly presentation, because I think you said at the time it was the biggest fish you'd ever caught on a fly, biggest bass you've ever caught on a fly. 100%. And, look, I'm very lucky that that my fly teacher was Scoey. So... um, it, it, it's a definitely a technique you've got to have have in your arsenal. I fished the very first bass grand final ever. Was at Maroon Dam. Thirty people qualified to fish it. I came thirtieth. <laughs> I didn't get one yeah. fish. I don't think for the whole event. And I'm pretty sure the top fifteen in the field got every fish on fly. So yeah. that was back then. I didn't fish it. Now it's a, it's a definitely doesn't matter what bass tournament I fish now. I will always have a fly in the boat because. When you're sitting over fish all day and if you can't get them to bite, sometimes that smaller presentation is what gets the gets the bite and gets gets the fish to go. So I was lucky enough after after that I was good mates with Scoey. He he gave me a bit of time. He taught me how to cast. And he not not many times I've had a teacher say that I'm a good student, but I knew I knew nothing about fly fishing. So whatever he said to do, I did. Um, I can probably cast most of a fly line out. It doesn't look the prettiest. Um, I probably fly fish best if there's about five knots of breeze to help the boat drift away a little bit, but um, but definitely it's it's a uh, it's it's a technique if you want to be a successful bass fisherman. I think it's a technique you've got to have for when the fish are really shut down, and and this day on the AFC the fish were really shut down. So, uh, you know, I've gone through all the techniques a few times and and then gone to the fly, and I think I caught a couple of little fish, but yeah, I got. The, you know the biggest fish I'd ever caught on fly before, and it, and what a time to get it. So it's it's uh, 
it's a slow way of fishing. So like we're fishing about 30 foot of water then, and the fish were holding near the bottom a lot of the time. So you cast your line out, and you basically got to count 60 seconds because it sinks a foot, you know, every two seconds to, and then start stripping back. But that uh, proof was in the pudding. Yeah, and look, it's, the fly is a real technique. It's, it's a totally different technique because that mask vibe or the soft vibe it target it's it's like a little bony brim so it's it's acting like a little bony brim which has fallen out of the school and is jigging around but that fly the bass vampire that we all use it, it's it imitates i think a little dragonfly larva or a mud eye if you that from you down south so instead of a fish eating a big chunk of protein this big they're eating a tiny little little dollop of protein so if they're not feeling like getting a big mouthful of bait they can just this little mud eye can just sort of flick past their face and they can just snap it and eat it and that's how the bite is that fly fishing takes are never are never you know screaming away they're not like a tuna they're just like you strip strip and then you strip and it's like oh i'm stuck on a bit of weed and then you know the fish is on so it's a real eating eating bite not a reaction bite isn't it yeah that that's that's right and and look it's it's not i still don't find it the most exciting way to to catch bass but definitely if you if you know if if you want to be a successful tournament fishing you've got to be well versed in as many techniques as possible because like like you said you could have 10 rods on the boat with 10 different lures with 10 different techniques and some days you've got to rotate and you've got to you find the technique or the color of lure or 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 the retrieve that they want so that that's probably why i I still love bass fishing probably more than any other style of fishing because it's it is you really have to do you really do have to think and they're such an aggressive fish but then they can be you know like barra and everything else they can be so shut down so you, you really do have to to think a lot while you're fishing for them now, when I was watching, I was doing my homework for this episode. I was watching the episode, watching this episode on AFC Series 6, and we're giving away some AFC DVDs later on, so stay tuned for that. Um, I was watching it. A couple of other things were pretty funny for me in that episode. First one was Moddy losing a good fish on an ice jig, and we've all done it before. On an ice jig, how do you have so many hooks and fish fall off it so often? What's the answer to that question, Timmy? Well, no, nah, well, I find ice jigging more boring than fly fishing, actually. I, I hate it. So I, I haven't really done it for a lot of years now. But, you know, it, it, it's it's like to see Moddy lose a fish, it does make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. So it's, it's uh, you know, we we all got a healthy rivalry. And, and you know, we all know Moddy uses really light rods, so it was probably only just legal anyway. You know, probably the one you lose. Yeah, <laughs> the one you lose is always huge. Yeah, right yeah. Moddy. One thing I remember from my 10 years in the field as an AFC producer was your ability to sniff something that wasn't going to go down well in the future, wasn't real future proof, and to throw a real quick swear word in at the end of it so we can't use it in the future. Like it's like you say something stupid and then it's effer at the end of it, you know, like you've just you've just wrecked it forever and we can't use that awesome quote. Harry Watson hadn't learnt that at this time. Let's have a look at Harry and his Somerset damn rap. We are not catching fish here today because these fish are here to stay. Harry's wrapped there with his little. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was that. That was probably more fun. Like Harry's, he's an old bull, and he and he is pretty wise. But he he didn't learn. Throw the swear. Didn't see word. that one coming. <laughs> didn't see that one coming at all, did he? And I don't know what was worse, his rapping or his dancing. <laughs> no, Blind. because the, the two weren't matched either. It was just an all that Harry, it was a one fish day. It was the bad dancing, the bad rap, and H, we know that you love us, mate, so we can take the piss out of you doing this, but that was dead set terrible, mate. It was in uh, it was in the Somerset Dam episode of uh, AFC Series 6. Look, we're going to give away, I'm going to give away, I've got heaps of these AFC DVDs at work still. I know you're going to be able to dust your DVD player off and, and win some. So what I want you to do is uh, is write down in the comments, uh, if it's on YouTube, on the side at YouTube, if it's on Facebook down the bottom there. Um, I want to write down your favourite AFC moment because I want those ideas uh, for AFC segments to do in the future. So uh, write your name down, write a great AFC moment. I'm going to get in touch with you and send you... Someone is going to get a lucky set of these AFC DVDs. Now, Timmy, to tie in the the, the favourite AFC moment with the techniques, what I want you to do is I want you to, to fast forward 10 years 
how many years is it? What year was this? This was in uh, 2009, so 11 years ago that was, um, just when the GFC was starting up, um, the last crisis. Tell us where we're at now with the soft vibes, what soft vibes you use nowadays, and, and give some of the guys out there a tip of some of the soft vibes and techniques they can use when they get back on the water again to do some bass fishing. Well, it's, it's not as much a soft vibe, but one thing I've probably caught more bass on this year than any other lure, and I've really loved fishing. I've fished my local impoundment, which is down at Hins, is the Storm Biscay Shad. So it's a, it's a soft plastic lure. It's weedless, so it's it's uh, got the hook inbuilt into it there. So, And one technique I've been using with this is through the timber. So it, it's really good fun fishing. It's it's on heavier bait cast gear, so, you know, 15 to 20-pound braid, you know, 15 to 20-pound leaders, throwing it into the thickest timber. The fish are down, you, they have been down 20 to 30 foot down there, finding those fish in the timber, counting it down and slow rolling it through. And the, the fish have really been nailing it. And it's a it's a really heavy lure too. So it's easy to fish on that heavy bait cast. That's 19 grams. So pretty close to three quarters of an ounce. So really good fun fishing. And, and to me, like they do that in a minnow as well. So with a, with a hook exposed, and I actually have caught some really good fish on that at, at Somerset as well. So really good head matching colours to, to the body. So really good bait fish profiles. So to me, I'll, well, look, of course, I plan to do all the tournaments except St. Clair this year. And it's it's looking a bit iffy at the moment. But they were going to be one of my secret weapons. I don't think a lot of people are using them yet. It's probably one of my biggest confidence baits at the moment. And... Um, I'm pretty sure they have gone very well for us. We've sold out, but later on in April, we'll be getting more in stock, and uh, that will be definitely a, a lure to have in your arsenal. So I know we've talked about the lure now, but take us through a cast. You're at Hinge, you're, you're in some sort of busted-up timber. You can see fish 20 feet down. Just tell me exactly how you fish that lure. Well, you, you look so at Hinge there. It, it's on the – we I launch a lot of the time on the western arm – um, that side's all been cleared because when they raised the wall, they could get the, the dozers in. So I, I head over the eastern side of that western arm where that timber comes out to about 40 foot. And you can see all the individual trees standing up. So you, you still try and line up, up a cast, you know, where you're going to get a bit of clear water. You don't want to throw over a branch or anything like that. A lot of the time, I'm letting it hit the bottom and then start slowly winding. And with that, with that weedless plastic... The bass there, they'll they'll hit it a few times. So sometimes you might get five or six hits on the on the on the retrieve. I just keep rolling it through, and then they'll come through and, and nail it. But the good thing about it is, is if you do hook it up on a tree, like you give it a, don't try and rip it out. Just if you if you hook it on a tree, just electric past it the other side. Just slowly tap the rod butt. It'll work its way through the tree and out. Like I've had days there where we've caught. 20 to 30 fish, no worries, throwing in thick timber and not losing one of these at all. So if, if you get used to the technique, if you hit a bit of timber, don't try and rip it out, go past it. Um, yeah, it's It's been magic fishing. And with hens, with that hasn't been over for so many years, there's some really good fish. So we've got a few over 50 this year as well. Awesome, mate. Uh, before we go, a uh, couple more comments. Uh, do you remember how many AFC titles you won? One. <laughs> one. There you go. And, uh, and, that, I and that was on the, on the back of Carl. Who won on the back of Carl. Well, I do notice on, in this episode, Carl and Adam Reuter are the two commentators, and Carl got no neck beard. You know, he's, he got kicked out of AFC the year before. I think he was a bit delicate at the time. and uh, But he did a really good job as commentator. He was there watching you catch bass on Somerset. Man, that must have chewed him right out. Yeah, well, he's gone from commentator to elite series pro, so I think he's done all right. But another yeah. thing I remember about a couple of times too is is he did he he won the grand final and got back in the next year so yeah so he, he did really well there but then we fished as a team he caught one fish in two events and we got kicked out again so go back to America Carl <laughs> you know you know what Carl's like we follow Carl he's he's you either look at the top or the bottom of the leaderboard never look in the middle he's at one end or the other isn't he. Yeah, just as you started, just as start, he was going really good, and you'd always start at the top. He'd have a bit of a, a drop in form, but no, I love, I love watching him. I watch all his updates. Uh, it's really proud to see him over there flying the flag for Australia. He, he's a really good ambassador for us, and and you know, I'm, I know we're all rooting for him. So, 
Yeah, you bet. And he's got himself a great sort of uh, Armageddon shelter over there to ride out this COVID thing through. He's got a nice property. He's on the lake. He's sort of self-isolation, you know, master level master. (laughs) Um, And one one last question I have got for you um, is the first event of the Suffix Bass Pro Series we just had, we just squeezed it in while you were still allowed to have 500 people in an outdoors event. One down at St. Clair on top water. How did that make you feel? That is unreal. I think I saw one of the highlights where Chris Hickson – was it Chris who had the quickest hit of all time? Oh, Maddie, Maddie? No, Maddie Langford. It was like it hit the water and bang. Bang straight onto it. So, And then that's why I love that dam. That was probably in ABT sessions in the grand final, Carl won down there actually. I came second. But the whole last day I spent – I threw top water. It was a rainy, drizzly day. I, I would have 20-plus fish easily and every one of them on top water. So it, it is that sort of dam. And I remember a few years ago, or oh, a few years after that, a lot of years ago now, that uh, Greg Flett won one there, and he was catching his fish on top water at one in the afternoon. So it's it's uh, it, I love those southern dams because you can catch them on every technique. So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, mate. We really appreciate your time uh, tonight and to give us a little bit of an insight back in AFC, what it was like back there and what your favourite AFC episode was. Thanks again for your sponsorship of ABT, mate. If anyone doesn't know, you're involved through Suffix uh, for the Suffix Bass Pro Series, the Rapala Australian Open. You've actually kicked in with VMC this year and uh, you can get bent you know, replacement hooks now. That's pretty cool. They're made by VMC. They're available in Australia. And also, uh, what do we got? One, two, and then, Costa. of course, Costa. The Costa Brim Series, which we got halfway through before this season has been slightly postponed. So, mate, thank you very much for your support. And we'll catch up with you in a future show. No worries. Catch up.